What is up? I'm Marcel and welcome back to The Modern Filmmaker. In this video we are talking about sound design in DaVinci Resolve 16. So as always, if you guys like videos on DaVinci Resolve and audio, make sure to give this video a like. I'd really appreciate it. And make sure to subscribe if you like videos like this. I make them all the time. Uh, so today we're talking about audio and just some of the techniques and the overall workflow that I use when I'm working on audio. So we are here in DaVinci Resolve 16 and the first hurdle I kind of had to jump through with this footage is most of it is at 120 frames a second with no sound. Um, literally I think all but two of these clips do not have sound um, so I had to take the sound from the clips that do have audio and kind of repurpose it for the shots that do not have audio uh, so let me jump over here to the fusion tab and I can show you my general kind of workflow for the sound design and for the overall video itself um, here you can see just a couple layers of video with some lens flares on them then I have all my clips on this video one track and then all my sound design right here um, starting with audio one has uh, just the her hitting those practice sounds from the few clips that have audio the second one is actually the music bed uh, the third one is some swooshes um, and and we're about to get into that because swooshes can be used for for so many little cool things and under that is some breathing noises that I brought in some female breathing noises for the the girl here that's boxing and then some neighborhood sounds just to add some atmosphere because atmosphere is so important so um, if I just start off right off the bat with just the music and the track because uh, the music and the video uh, the main video track um, because that's how I usually start off every video to me music usually tells me exactly uh, kind of how to f how the flow of the video will go um, I usually have a general concept of what I want out of the video but then after I shoot, I'll, I'll find a song, or even before I shoot, I'll find a song. And that song will kind of be like a blueprint. And, and it's just awesome how uh, something as simple as music uh, can really guide you if you let it. And so let me just play the music with the video track, because um, that is the first thing I did. I brought the music in and modified it to my liking, and then I laid down the clips, you know, how I wanted it to lay over the music. And it starts off pretty calm, kind of going back between the slow-mo shots like this and then those high intensity bump, 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 and slow again. And then it kind of crescendos and builds into this. She's just like going at it at this point. And I mean, even without the, the sound effects, I mean, you can still tell what's going on. And I think a lot of that is just the fact that it's it's well cut to the music and I really kind of played alongside the music um, when I laid these clips down uh, to kind of flow uh, not just with the with the you know one clip to flow with the other clips but so it all kind of flowed with the music together which is really important you know just the fact you know the little things like starting off slow um, close up with a detailed shot of what's about to happen just by her putting this glove on it says a lot but this video is not about how to edit a video so let me get to the, the audio um and then from there that's actually when i worried about the problem of the audio i honestly at first was like oh my god how am i going to do this you know what i'll deal with the music first lay the clips down and then i'll bring in the audio after so um pretty much when i laid the clips down i think this clip and this last one were the only ones that have audio on them originally so what I did I'm gonna solo this audio track one so you guys can just hear uh, her with the her practicing and you can see all these cuts in the beginning all these cuts were me kind of splicing up the two audio files that I had 
and replacing them in between. Um, so you can see here, it kind of fades out there because the the guy swung his arm, so I had to take out the next hit that was actually in the audio right there. Um, and that that this is a really cool section uh, because this is something uh, just in the normal. Uh, clips that I have laid out in audio one of her hitting these pads. One thing I love about DaVinci, and it just makes it so freaking simple with audio, is the fact that you have all these attributes just in the clip alone. Um, so I could come in here and it allowed me to cut out some bad frequencies right off the bat. If I take off this clip equalizer and play this, it sounds a little more tinny. And if I play it now, it took out some of those bad frequencies and what's really even cooler than that is in the equalizer on the track there's a separate equalizer for each track and that's why I have um, certain things like all the punches I have on one track that way I could equalize them all together afterwards taking you know taking further out um, bad frequencies and stuff like that and so that is one reason that it's good to just keep everything organized you know I have the music on one track I have the her practicing and hitting the pads on another track I've got the swooshes on another track in the neighborhood and the breathing on separate tracks also. That way, at the end, you kind of have full control over that whole track. And if I needed to, you know, if I needed to do crossovers that I couldn't do with one track, I could have, um, you know, let's say her practicing, I could have that spread out upon two tracks. You know, let's say I just had to do, do that for one reason or another. That's just how I would separate it. I would try to keep everything on one to two tracks and keep them together. That way you have control over the tracks at the end. So down here there is actually a compound clip and where you hear it kind of fade down. And this was a super simple thing to do. If I right click this compound clip and open in timeline, and you can see exactly what I was saying uh, about cutting up the clips to make a sound. I literally took probably two audio sounds out of um, one of the audio files I had and just made not the prettiest sounds not the prettiest sounds at all <laughs> but I didn't need them to be awesome high quality sounds because I knew that I was going to be taking down the high frequencies and getting more of that like sound next door kind of sound anyway so if I go back to our original timeline Let's see, where has it gone? I lost the timeline, people. Here it is. And here, if I click on the compound uh, clip, you can see that in the equalizer, I've got all the highs cut. And if I take this off, then it looks how it was. And here, all I did was line them up here to the hits. I literally clicked with the left and right arrows so I could go up one frame or back one frame and just lined up those hits. And then I selected them all, right clicked, and made a compound clip. That way I could have them all in one group and I could equalize them all together. Uh, you could equalize them all separately, of course, um, but this to me seemed like a faster, kind of more intuitive way to do it. Um, Yeah, really cool. And in a past video, the frame blocking video, I had mentioned how swooshes really make that, that frame block seem more realistic. It really makes it seem like something is coming, like a physical thing is coming across the screen. And it, it's really interesting how when you use swooshes just as transitions, because you hear it first and it comes in, you hear it first, your brain already knows that there's something coming. So if your clips are lined up well, and well uh, with good composition and you have these swooshes come by on your transitions it really leads to a really cool effect that almost feels like you can feel the transition happening even though you can't uh, so let me solo the swooshes and give this a play I mean, it just has a really cool little feel. And you see that I'm using those sounds also to make a swoosh sound when his hand 
kind of dodges dodges her because it really just adds to the motion. You're hearing it may not make a lot of sense when it's by itself, and you just play back this. It's like what the heck is that? <laughs> and even down here, I've got more of them. <laughs> that sounds like a sword. That sounds ridiculous. But when you add the punches, it adds like a whole different dynamic. Let me add those in. Boom. And one cool thing about these swishes is I probably used like three different swishes. Um, I could have used more and I probably could have used a lot better ones, but I only used like three different swishes. And what I did for something like, uh, let me go back to one of these triplets, like this one here, is I would just click on one and you can see a couple things about swishes. Now, if you got to swoosh past the screen, right? A lot of the swooshes you'll find online, which they're really easy to find, just search swoosh sound effect, and you'll find tons of them. And a lot of them have kind of a deep tone, like a zhoof. And if you listen to this one, it kind of sounds deep. And if you cut out that, that, low, uh, that low frequency or, or those low frequencies, then you really get a much more accurate... Because, I mean, this guy's hand, my hand even in real life, we're not really making these like you do in the movies. But if you are moving something that is as big as your arm, like a baseball bat, really fast, it's not going to make a low tone. It's going to make more of a high tone. So um, that's just kind of a, a pro tip for the swooshes. Um, even though they still don't sound realistic. They still sound ridiculous. Um, uh, they're still really, really cool. But what I did with these, I not only EQ'd them slightly differently to sound a little different on each one, but I came up here and I made different volumes for each of them. Just slight variations in volume. And then I also made slight variations in the semitones of the clip pitch. That way it kind of has more of like a... <laughs> instead of like a... <laughs> Because it sounded like, you know, old karate movie and somebody kicking three times. It didn't sound right. It didn't sound right before. Not at all. It was ridiculous. And it's still a little ridiculous, but, but it sounds way better. And um, this was one of the things I started with. Uh, these three elements right here were the three I started with. And at some point, I, I just wanted to listen to the background noise. And so I muted the audio and listened back. Uh, let me mute this one. And it's good, and it's cool, but because there's so many little cuts I had to make, you hear a lot of weirdness. Um, and plus, you know, having any kind of ambiance always usually helps. Even if, you know, when you're watching a movie and you notice, there's usually always some kind of sound there. Um, even if somebody's in a really quiet place, there's usually like some kind of humming in the background from like an AC unit, or they'll place noise in there just to add some kind of ambience. And so I've added uh, this. The last thing I added was this neighborhood sound effect. And if I play just the file, it is pretty funny. So you have all these dogs, and you hear traffic. And I just went past where the dogs are down here. And you can hear the birds in the background, the rustling of the trees. You hear little traffic, um, but not too much. And you even hear some kids in the background kind of kind of yelling. Uh, and I put that in, and that really made a world of difference. It just evens things out, and I highly recommend... Um, you know, I know audio is like really tedious. It's a lot like masking is. I've talked about this in color grading videos, on color grading videos, on color grading videos. Masking is terrible at first. It's the worst. Uh, but it's because it takes so long. You don't know what you're doing. Um, and you're not good at it. So the more you get better at masking, uh, the more you get better. <laughs> the more better. Um, the better you get at masking, the easier it becomes and the more you do it just because it's not this tedious, terrible task. And audio is the same way. Once you kind of get used to this workflow of, okay, let me find a song. Um, maybe you could choose to find some ambience after that. 
and then you know you kind of lay these beds down and make it kind of like a step by step kind of thing you do with every video or with just the videos that need it because not every video I uh, I do has this kind of intricate sound effects oh I almost forgot I had the breathing which is really it's a subtle thing that you barely even notice that comes along here when the beat picks up it's right there and does it sound like her breathing no it doesn't I mean this girl sounds scared and not like she's exercising but still, just that tension, it adds a certain amount of tension um, that it just I felt like it needed at that point because it really starts to build here, and this is where she's going all out. And this is also completely uncolor graded. So if you guys want to see a color grading video on this, let me know in the comments, and I will definitely put that on the list. And once I have everything laid out, I, I usually switch to the Fairlight screen from there. Um, that may seem odd to some people, but I like to be able to see the video, especially when I'm trying to time to the video. Um, I like to be able to see the video clips and how they're laid out. So usually I'll lay things out, and then I'll come back to Fairlight. And let me scoot this up. And you can see here that I have the further EQing that I mentioned earlier on some of the bad frequencies um, and just the, the audio from the, the set that day. Boom, just that audio. I have a lot of uh, frequencies cut out. If I deactivate this and play this again, let's see. Let me go right here, yeah. And then turn it off. I don't know if you guys can hear a difference, but I definitely can. Um, and then from there, I just did some noise reduction. And that's another awesome thing about just the Fairlight page and how everything is set up. Is It makes it super simple. You know, we have everything on its separate tracks. And now over here to the right, we also have our separate tracks. And it's just so simple to come over here and mess with the EQ. You can come down here and you have a ton of Fairlight effects as well as VSTs you might have. Um, from other programs that you use uh, and there's not really much to say about this in this video uh, other than there's just it's it makes it so easy and that's what I love is I don't have a million other things pulled up I don't have any third-party plugins pulled up I don't have um, even a million screens to pull up really I have some simple things done in the EQ I have some reverb and some noise reduction and from there just some balanced mixing uh, to get the end result. It's sick! It's sick! It is sick, and I hope you guys learned something. If you did learn something, if you liked this video, go ahead and click that like button. I mean, you might as well, if you liked it. And of course, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, leave them in the comment section down below. I always reply. And make sure to subscribe if you like videos on DaVinci Resolve. We're doing all my audio, editing, coloring now, fusion. God, we're getting all over the place. And as always, I'm Marcel, and this has been The Modern Filmmaker, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace!